Here we have the Deepcool Lucifer V2 CPU cooler. It's actually quite an interesting cooler. It has lots of positives, but also lots of negatives. So how about we take a look at it? Starting in the box, you're gonna find lots of different accessories for helping you to mount it on multiple different types of CPU socket. Down at the bottom of the screen now, you're gonna see all the different brackets that it supports. So take a look, see if yours is on there. Moving on to the aesthetics of the CPU cooler, you're going to find a weirdish greeny blue sort of fan. Now, that's not really something we see very often, and if that's what you're going for in your colour, then fair enough, get this fan, it'll be great for you. But not many people are, and I don't see why you would. So Deepcool's decision to go with this colour, maybe not one that I would have made myself. Probably would have gone with a black, that's, that's fairly safe in most builds, don't know why. It wasn't kept standard, really probably is going to hit sales on that one. But you never know, you might like the CPU cooler enough to just replace the fan. Moving on to the cable. Now, if you look at here, you're going to find a really nice sort of sleeved cable. But it's actually quite nice compared to what you're going to find on many of the competitors. So great plus side to deep cool there. Moving on to construction, you're going to find six heat pipes. They feel pretty well made, nice and thick, and between the fins there's quite a bit of space. So it's, that's actually very good if you want to have a quiet build because it means it's better for low RPM fans, it's better to push air through. So good job on that one, deep cool. Moving on to installation. For me, I found it quite difficult. It took far too long for what it should have done, and there's one simple reason why. The instructions, for starters, weren't very clear. It was not very well illustrated and it wasn't very well written either. Another problem that I had was Deepcool don't actually include a very long, or they don't include any tools for installing the CPU cooler. Now, the reason that was a problem for me and I struggled to install it with my normal tools was because of this little bit here. Now, the reason that was a problem was because you're not going to find many screwdrivers that can fit all the way through this gap to the bottom and then into the screw that you need to use to tighten it to the bracket. Now that became quite a challenge for me to get that installed, but luckily once I did, I was able to install everything and everything went fine after that. Inside the box, you're also gonna find some deep cool thermal paste. Didn't use that for this test, we used some Arctic Silver 5. So we're gonna move on to the results now. Okay, so our test system will include an i5-4690 inside of an NZXT H440. However, it will also be running a PowerColor R9 390 for graphics. Looking at idle temperatures, the Lucifer V2 actually runs at the centre of the pack. With only one degree of difference either side, there isn't much to talk about. However, the Hyper 212 Evo, which is actually £15 cheaper than the Lucifer V2, actually runs cooler at idle, something that you might find important. Things start to become more interesting when running IDA64. Here we see that the Lucifer V2 actually runs at the coolest, hitting a maximum temperature of 74 degrees Celsius. The next closest being the Noctua at 75 degrees Celsius, whereas the NZXT trails slightly sluggishly behind at an 86 degrees Celsius. Not very impressive. Okay, so that was my video review of the Lucifer V2 CPU cooler, and I hope you found it useful. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and if you're watching it on Amazon, then I hope it helped you make a purchase.